All right, we are super excited at the start of the year. It's our first Inside Pac-12 football show, which is on Pac-12 Network every single Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. But we wanted to spend some time with some of our student athletes in the conference and one who's got arguably the best story, I think, in the entire league. Davion Taylor from Colorado, who played a whopping one game in high school. Davion, appreciate you giving us a couple minutes here. Explain how a kid who played one high school game has landed in Colorado playing for the Buffs. Well, it was always just a dream. Um, I wanted to play uh, at the B1 level, but never thought I had the opportunity. But uh, once I had uh, got an opportunity to play at a community college, I just went there and then the coaches, like they believed in me and everything. They told me that I could play at the next level. And uh, I just worked hard, worked my butt off, and, uh, and here I am. That's fascinating. I think what's even more fascinating about that is that in high school football, you practiced with the team, but didn't play in games. I think when we see recruiting now, Mike and I are always talking to recruits. The love for the game is what's always in question. Do they love football or do they love recruiting? What was it like for you to practice all week, not get recruited and not play on Friday nights, but still want to compete in this game of football? Well, like, it was hard, to be honest, because like, I practiced all the time. And then like, uh, I was like, more like a scout team player. So I had like, played quarterback. I played running back. I played mostly every position just like, to make this, the, uh, the team better. And, um, and I just, just keep, uh, kept on doing that. And I think it really helped me transition to a community college because if I didn't do that my senior year, I probably would have like, went up in there like, not uh, having the skills I had and uh, not be able to develop them my senior year and going into the, uh, the community college. David, your path is, is unique and certainly not typical of most of your teammates. How do you think it's shaped you as a player right now? Oh, it just makes me humble because every uh, – like just being here, just knowing that uh, I didn't play high school football, just it, it, I think it humbled me because, like, I don't I don't think I'm too good. I don't think I'm. Uh, I always I actually put myself down because I know that I didn't play high school football, and I see everybody else uh, have, have the experience that I don't have. But um, the main thing I think it just keep, keeps me humble, and just like when I make it to the next level, I think it just continues to just make me humble every year, just knowing that I didn't play uh, in high school. Oh, so you guys would be observing the Sabbath Friday until Saturday evening. Curious for your mom, the first time she saw you play in a game and saw you do your thing, what was that conversation like afterwards? Uh, she, she was excited because she actually came to a Saturday game. Uh, like usually we have church on Saturday, so like she talked to my pastor and she let her come out here. And uh, she came out here and she was like, excited to see me play. And it was actually the Washington State game, one of my best games of the season. And uh, I was happy to see her out there. And she was just happy to see me out there. After the game, we talked about it. And she see that, uh, that, that I could have, like, if she would have let me play in high school, I probably would have been a good player. But like, because of the religion, like, she couldn't. But like, she was just, she's, just, she's very happy for me. And she wanted to see me succeed. Wow. When your teammates found out that you didn't play a full season, let alone multiple seasons in high school, and did what you've done on the field. What were their initial conversations with you like? Um, every one of them, like, impressed because like, they, they always ask me, like, how did you make it right here? Like, and then, like, uh, knowing that I was like, one of the outs number one outside linebackers coming out of uh, junior college, they always ask me, like, how did I do it? And uh, I just I always tell them, like, it's just working hard and just believing that you can do anything. And then, like, I always, I always uh, been a religious person. And I always think uh, God just brought me here. And I always say, it's like, he brought me here for a reason. That's why I just never stop working hard. And I always tell him that if you work hard, you can do anything. David, you are a long way from home. Mississippi, I know your mom, Stephanie, doesn't get opportunities too often to see you play mm -hmm. in person. Community in Boulder. It's Yogi and I have been to campus many times. It is one of the, the best places on the West Coast. How, and now it's a new coaching staff. How has the group come together so even though you're far from home, it does still feel like a second home for you now. Yeah, oh yeah, and then the football team, they've, they've all become like brothers to me now. And uh, so even though I'm away from home, I feel at home in Boulder because all the football players were so close and the coaches, they're like, we're all so close. And during this fall camp, we've built like a brotherhood and, uh, and like, I feel like I'm home now. So I really don't miss home, like Mississippi as much just because I built, uh, we built like a community, a community here and I'm just really excited for the season. Yeah, so are we, man. I, we, Mike and I, we, we've been to this game, right, this rivalry game in that stadium. It's a, it's a magical environment. You've played in this rivalry game. And, and I find it ironic that here we are talking to you who didn't play in quote-unquote Friday night lights, but you're playing Friday night under some huge lights in this rivalry yes, game. What's gonna, it's going to be like for you to play for the final time against Colorado State on Friday? 
um, I'm going to be very excited. Like I know I worked hard this uh, this off season, and I'm just ready to see the results because uh, with these new coaches, I've worked harder than I probably ever have my entire life. So I'm just ready to see the results. I'm just ready to play, and I'm just ready to I'm just ready to do good. <laughs> Davion, before I let you get going, you mentioned the excitement around playing uh, this coming week. And when we get opportunities to see a special player, we're, we're always going to sign up for it. Yogi and I were both in Boulder uh, a couple weeks ago and had an opportunity to see one of your teammates, who I know you get to match up against in LaVisca Chanel. Mm. He is a Heisman candidate. We saw how special he is. He had at least two wow moments when I was at practice. I'm sure he mm. had a few when you were there, Yogi. What's it like to see him? Because we see what happens on Saturdays. What's mm. it like when you see him working out on a consistent basis? Oh, it's, it's great because, like, I, I sometimes I have to match up against him on third down. And, like, he's a very big receiver. He's quick. He's, like, it's, it's, I think he's making me better as a player because he's, like, like one of the best receivers I've ever went, to, went against. And he, he is one of the best receivers in the nation, I believe. And, like, it's just very exciting just going against, against him. And, like, he just makes us work harder. He makes the DBs work harder because he go, he goes super – like, he, he grinds so hard at practice that, like, I see why like, he's, like, shining games. This conference is known for its offensive acumen. You've, you've got a new head coach who's a defensive expert. What has it been like learning from Mel Tucker, and what's the mindset of this team defensively heading into this fall? Uh, relentless, that's one word he always say, and that, uh, one word that we always bring to practice. Like, we're trying to be the most conditioned, the most physical. Like, he bringing that SEC uh, mentality in the Pac-12, and I think that's what, what this defense really needs in order to be successful. So that being said, are you going to start rocking the cowboy collar like Nate Lambin? <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm there yet. <laughs> I think you should. I why, like it. Why not, man? Just have a, a little bit hey, of fun. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, we, we are looking forward to watching you on the football field, not only this upcoming week, but, but certainly throughout the course of the rest of the season. Appreciate you giving us some time. Uh, no problem. You know, I think one of, one of the cool things uh, about his story is obviously it's unique, Yogi, but I think when you look at this team, big picture here, you mentioned Mel Tucker coming in. There is a different type of intensity around this football team, and they're going to need it on the defensive end. Offensively, I know we spent time talking to Davian about, uh, about his story, and obviously he's playing on the defensive side. Offensively, biggest question mark coming into the season is what? Can they protect? You know, can they protect Steven Montes? He's been under a lot of scrutiny, and that's what happens in that position, like we know and we talk about all the time, but... He got sacked a dramatic amount of times last year. They've got to keep him upright. I expect them to get the ball out, and that's fair. And then it's on him because this is a fifth-year senior. They've got to win games. They've got to have success because Mel Tucker's building the program. And whether you talk to Herm Edwards or whatever the first-year coach is, they want to get going for the future. So I think it's on the O-line and then pressure, of course, on Steven Montez to perform. Ton of weapons offensively. And I get it. People talk about Montez and LaVisca. You go across the board, though, especially at the wide receiver spot. Katie Nixon probably doesn't get enough credit. Yeah. I'd also argue we're trying to figure out who's going to be that 1,000-yard rushing back, or running back as well. That's still one of those big-picture questions for the upcoming season. But don't forget, it's a story that we're going to be tracking, a team that we're going to be tracking all season long, every single Tuesday night on Inside Pac-12 Football. You do not want to miss it. 6 p.m. Pacific time. For Yogi Roth, I'm Mike Yam. Thank you so much for watching.